Hey everyone, Echo Whiskey here. Thought I'd show you a tutorial on Sony Vegas, how to create Battlefield 3 cinematic effects. So here we go. I've got Sony Vegas open already. I've got two clips from Battlefield 3. These are being used in my movie. I'll just show you the clips real quick. So people have asked, what type of effects do I use on these clips? So generally what I do is I put effects on the entire track. So the whole movie has the same feel to it. And then sometimes I'll put effects on each individual clip. So the first thing I do is soft contrast. And with this one, I created a custom one. And you can see the values here, 25, 40, 80, and 25 on the tint, and nothing on the vignette. All right, secondly, color corrector secondary. And with this, I use the, well, I started with the boost mids and then I messed with it a little bit and saved one. All right, third, I use color curves, but twice. So on the first one, I, again, went to the warm colors and I messed with it until I found something that I liked and saved one. So it doesn't have this, you know, really reddish glow to it. It's more balanced. And then on the second one, I created another one for all the channels that kind of has this S curve, but really slight. You never want to overdo these effects. And so with those, you can see here, I'll actually uh, duplicate this track for you guys bypass the effects so you can see everything side by side. So that's the before shot and that's the after. As you can tell it's more it's more balanced. It doesn't have this really blue tint that's characteristic for Battlefield 3. Okay, so that being said We'll actually use this track again, so I'm just going to delete these clips and delete the effects on that track for now. Nah, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, so then we get into cropping. What I use is a 2.35 to 1 ratio anamorphic crop, and so I set this up for 1920 by 1080 and then cropped it down to 1920 by 817, which is that aspect ratio. But when I render the project out, it's 1280 by 720 so that you get the black bars on top and it's properly formatted for YouTube and all that stuff. So you can just set those values right here. This one I have set to 1280 by 544 because it fits to the footage. And then you want to make sure you lock the aspect ratio. And so you want to make sure also that you crop the video before you do any changing to the video or splitting it up. Because if you use motion in your crop, that motion will be split up when you split the frame. And you don't want to have to do the motion from one frame to, or from one clip to the next clip to the next clip. So for this one, And yeah, probably trim it to there. And I'd probably crop this up. Get rid of the bottom of a little bit there. Yep, there we go. 
and we'll just trim this one down. So on these ones with the knife, again I use the same crop preset that I created, but, oops, you notice that when I set it all the way to the top you still see a little bit of the character's hand right here. So you're going to have to just scale it down, move it back up, you know, move it to wherever you want it. Okay. So then other people will ask me, how do I do a depth of field effect? And for those who don't know what that means, it's when you have a camera lens, it can only focus on one distance at a time. So when you have a subject, the background will be blurry, the foreground will be sharp, or vice versa. So it makes it look like it's filmed with an actual camera instead of all just rendered in game. So with this, you have to have a duplicate track, and I again have the same effects on this duplicate track. I copy and paste the footage right on top of each other. Then what I do is on the bottom one I go to effects and I add what's called Sony defocus. And I messed around with the values but you don't want to use a really heavy blur. I actually use three presets and for this one we'll use the medium just to show you guys. You can see the presets here and for the large and or the heavy and the light presets that I created I just scaled the radius up and down respectively. So you can see, I'll mute this track, it actually blurs, it just blurs the whole camera but it's not a circular blur as would be in like the Gaussian blur preset. This is, it's a hexagon or a heptagon rather, just like a camera lens would have. So that being on the bottom track, what we now need to do is create a mask on the top track so that it shows through. Oh, wrong one. So with this one, I would probably, well, you go to your mask first. And just, what I'm going to do is do one here. and I'll make that negative so that the rest of the picture is in focus and this is blurry. I should move this out just a little bit more. That'll work. Don't worry about the jagged lines for now because we'll get rid of this. And I turned the mask to negative. So that way the mask area that you select in here is the area that's going to be blurry instead of the other way around in positive. So now we can go to the mask settings and put a feather on it. And I feather both ways at about 30. I decided I don't like this. Yeah, that seems a little better. So now I'll uh, render this out and let you guys watch it. So you can see that the foreground is blurry. The background at this point is not. And so this kind of gives the image the feel that it's being filmed from a long distance away. 
because the camera's at its, its longest focus length here. Everything behind that would be sharp as well. Alright, so on some of the other clips I use um, the soft contrast effect again, but this time I don't actually add the contrast. I just use it for the vignette and I'll either add a blur or a black vignette around it. And I generally only use this on low angle shots or shots from the first person perspective. So we'll add the soft contrast. And I created a custom one just using the vignette, but what you guys can do is we'll just get all this down so it doesn't do anything. You can see when I mute it, it stays the same. And we'll go to the vignette and we will do a elliptical and we'll put the strength at about 70 or so we'll do the black one for now and then you guys can just mess around with these to see how you like it I created a strong and a mild for the black effect so we'll actually use my mild preset and that's that so you can see how Yeah, you can see it's just, I don't know, it makes it look kind of cinematic. And so with that said, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope this helps.